What's going on folks? It's Mike here and today we're going to continue our C++ series by introducing our first data structure, the array. An array is a data structure that's built into the C++ programming language. Just like if you're coming from Python, lists are a fundamental data structure built into the language. So let's go ahead and talk about arrays in C++. And first I want to talk just a little bit conceptually about what an array is. And an array, again, is a data structure. So it's some way to take a bunch of data and put it in some sort of structure so we can access or modify it in a sort of reasonable or principled manner. Again, it makes it easier for us to reason about large amounts of data and how we can think about it. As opposed to, for example, let's say if I just had a little program here and let me go ahead and just create a main function with a return here. If I just had a bunch of variables like people, so person one, person two, person three, etc. This isn't very structured and I could create people everywhere. Why not just have all of that data collected in one place? And that's exactly what an array is. So it's a sort of homogeneous data structure. And it contains all of our items, whether they're people or numbers or whatever the data is that we're storing in a contiguous block of data. So the data is stored contiguously. So let's go ahead and just take a pragmatic example here. And let's just say I have a bunch of IDs, maybe they're uh, student IDs or whatever they are. And let's say I want a hundred of them. And this is how I create an array in C++. I just put in brackets how much of that data I want. So my IDs look something like this. Uh, let's go ahead and do IDs 100. And that essentially gives me 100 IDs contiguously laid out one after the other. So I'll just put dot, 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 and so on. And in C++, we talk about arrays or we index into them or access the first record using a zero. So the zeroth element, the first element, second, third, and so on, all the way to our 99th element, which represents the total collection of, well, 100 total elements here. Again, we're counting from zero. So let's go ahead and see how we do this in C++. And I'm going to go ahead and give myself a uh, library here so that we can print out things to our standard output. So again, if we want to access the first element, we start from zero and we just assign it a value. Maybe it's some student ID or something. Uh, and then we can likewise just print it out. So let's just go ahead and do ID zero and we'll give an end line here so that we can see our record. And I'm gonna compile it just like we've been doing previously. This is the array example and let's just go ahead and run it and again we can confirm that this value is one two three four five now there's no guarantee what is in our actual array data here so for example and let me go ahead and just um, click on this here uh one two three four five that was the actual data we had here let me mark it in a different color two three four five but what is in here or here or here? Well, there's no guarantee. We need to actually initialize our data. So we have to be a little bit careful with arrays. We can never assume what is in them. Now, in a future lesson, uh, very soon, I'm going to show you how to do this with a for loop. So for now, I'm just going to uh, do it, and then I'll explain the pieces in a future lesson here. But here, we could just set all the IDs at some index ranging from 0 to no greater than 100, so 99, and just assign that a value of, say, i here. And we could also have another loop after here that just prints out those values. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to copy this line here and print out these values at the index i, because that's what we want to index in our array. So let me go ahead and make this just a little bit bigger. And let's go ahead and recompile this program because we've made some changes and rerun it. And you'll see all the different values of our IDs being printed out here. In fact, let me scroll up just so you can see all 100 of them. Now, again, you can see the power of this data structure here, the array, because, well, creating 100 variables by hand would 
take forever, essentially. So in C++, we have them here. Now, some other things that we do want to consider is it's very nice that all of this data is contiguous and right next to each other. That makes it easy for a machine like our actual CPU to access this data. Uh, we like when things are sequentially organized. So there's more on optimizations and things that we can talk about there that are interesting, but I'm going to leave it at that. Now, one cool thing about data structures that we have, like even this raw array here, is we can run algorithms on them. So I'm going to have to introduce something that we're not going to talk about for at least a little while, but let me get rid of these loops and, uh, or at least this first loop and assume that we don't have it. And I'm going to include another library here. This is called numeric. And I'm going to just add one more function. And again, we still have to talk about functions here, but I just want to show you something that's cool. It's part of the standard library. It's called IOTA, uh, like this. And what we can do is in some collection or data structure like IDs here, which is 100 integers that are sequentially laid out next to each other, we could run some algorithm on it. In fact, we could sort of replace that for loop that we did. And in fact, I'm going to need to introduce one other idea here. That's an iterator, which again, we'll talk about later in this uh, idea um, series, where we just start at the beginning of our array and we go to the end of our array and we're going to set the first value from zero as such. Okay, so it's just a one line program. So very, or, or rather one line statement that's going to run that same for loop algorithm that we saw previously. So let me go ahead and recompile this, rerun it, and you're going to see the same exact output. Now, if I didn't want to start from zero, I could change this to say 10 here, and we're going to see the uh, appropriate uh, output. So we're going to start uh, instead from uh, assigning our values from zero from 10. So let me scroll all the way up so we can see our first element here. So that's kind of cool that we have this algorithm here, IOTA, which is just filling up our array with data. And we can do that from the beginning to the end here. And since everything's just in this one data structure, this raw array, it's easy as that. So that's maybe getting a little bit ahead of ourselves and is something cool that you can do with an array. Now, I do want to talk about the type of array we're using. This is built in, it's just using the brackets here. So this means when we're using this array here, this data structure that we've created, that at compile time, so when we build our program, that is, I've decided ahead of time before I, when I make any changes that this is going to be 100 integers. So I'm just going to make another note here that we decide the size of our array at compile time. And I haven't yet distinguished between this idea of compile time or runtime, which if you could guess is when our program's actually running, but it is something to keep in mind. I can't change the size of this array here. In fact, if I try to access, say, the 101st element, I could get a crash. And that's sort of an interesting idea because sometimes it doesn't always crash, but we know that we at least have room for 100 integers here. So we do have to be a little bit careful with our arrays. Now that said, folks in the C++ language said, well, you know, wouldn't it be nice if we could have even another level of abstraction on top of just these, what we call raw arrays, these arrays where we just create them and say we want 100 items and we just sort of determine this. But there's nothing, again, that's preventing the user from doing something wild, for instance, um, and trying to access the one, you know, hundred thousandth element, even though we clearly said we only have room for 100. So what I want to introduce to you in our standard library, so there is a page here on just arrays and how to use them. These are the raw arrays that we talked about, but there is a container data structure built, standard array which gives us a little bit more power and flexibility and safety as well so that we don't access the 100,000th element. In fact, I'm going to just try to assign this uh, element to some value here. And let me recompile this and rerun it. And sometimes you'll see this error called a segmentation fault, which means you access something out of bounds in your array. You don't have access to 100,000 elements here. Again, only 100. So again, what the standard array container gives us, and I'll sort of scroll down here, is more power. And this is where we get into objects and a little bit of object-oriented programming. 
So again, I just want to tease this idea while I'm showing you arrays. Modern C++, we like to use containers and data structures. So I'm going to go ahead and include array, just like before where we included string before when we wanted a string data structure. And go ahead and refactor our code just a little bit here. So our IDs, instead, we're going to use the standard array. And we have to specify the type and how many we want here. And this is actually something that's a sort of template syntax, which we haven't talked about. But again, I just want to tease some of these ideas so that you see them. So I'm going to get rid of that there. And now let me go ahead and recompile this program. It still recompiles. And I'm going to rerun it. And I still get the error. Hmm. So what did I really achieve here? Well, we want to actually use our array. And there's some safer ways to access elements. So there's dot at we can call, which accesses a specified element with bounds checking. So it's going to see if we access something outside of this range of just our 100 integers. So let's actually try that. Let's do IDs dot at. And any time where we're going to try to change some value, we'll test it and try to run this program. And now we get a warning here. Uh, or rather an exception that is thrown that says, hey, you access something out of range. And that's a little bit more descriptive than the actual segmentation fault that we got here. And it's telling us here, hey, your range here, n, uh, which is 100,000, is greater than 100 here. So let me make this a little bit bigger on the screen just so you can see here that we get a really sort of nice air check here. C++ is still going to let us write code like this. Um, but with this data structure, we can now easily say, oh, OK, I made this error here. And now I should uh, modify it. You know, something like the 99th index or whatever. So now I can rerun this, recompile it. And you'll see that our last element is, in fact, 9. And that's legal. So we now know a little bit about this data structure here. And we can do other things with it, like grab the first element, the last element, um, or get the actual underlying raw array if we want, um, which can be useful when we talk about passing data around to functions. But let me go ahead and start closing this lesson out uh, as our introduction to arrays here. Again, arrays, whether they're the standard array or the raw array, which we learned about, which I'm going to just put in a, a comment here as int IDs 100. So this was our raw array. And this is our standard template library uh, data structure version of the array, which I'll abbreviate as STL. But either way, both those arrays are homogeneous data structures. They're a way to structure or keep data together. The data that's stored is contiguous. That's how we can sort of easily access the 0th, 1st, 2nd, 3rd record in our array. And once we decide the size, of our program, that means if we, when we write it in source here, that we say it's 100 items big, regardless of the data structure type, that's how big it is. That's how many elements we've reserved in memory where we can store information. And because arrays are a data structure, we can do some cool things that we're going to learn about uh, with many data structures, like running different algorithms at them, like this cool one line algorithm that just populates the entire array. And again, I'll make that a little bit bigger just so you can see it. So folks, with that said, we've now learned about our first data structure, and we can start storing data in sort of an interesting way. And we'll have to think a little bit more about how we pass data around into functions and these sort of things, especially when they're large data structures, maybe with 100,000 elements, if we get to that point. But anyways, I hope this was a useful introduction to raw arrays and the thing modern C++ programmers tend to do, which is rely on std or standard colon colon array. All right, folks, if you're enjoying this, go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss the next lessons, and we'll see you in the next one.